Welcome grade 11s. Today in our lesson about energy and chemical change, we will learn about the bond energy that is involved in chemical reactions. We will also learn how to use calculations to determine if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Nelly will start today's lesson with an explanation about the energy that is involved in all the reactions around us. Everything we do in our daily lives involves chemical and energy changes. Lighting a candle, washing the dishes, starting a car, eating food, taking a pill to stop a headache, or baking a cake. Chemical changes occur through a process known as a chemical reaction. The substances that exist before the reaction are called the reactants. The substances that are produced during a chemical reaction are called the products. This is a model of hydrogen molecules and oxygen molecules. These molecules can break apart and recombine to form a new molecule, water. Here, hydrogen and oxygen are the reactants, and water is the product. It is important to understand that although not all chemical reactions take place in the same way, they all involve changes in energy. Chemical potential energy is stored within the bonds that hold all molecules and compounds together. When chemical bonds break and when new bonds form, the chemical potential energy may be transformed into other forms of energy. One important way in which we can classify reactions based on the energy changes that occur during the reaction is by looking at what effect the reaction has on the environment around it. Some chemical reactions clearly release energy into their surroundings. We can feel this released energy in the form of heat, see it as light, and even hear it as sound. A chemical reaction that releases energy into its surroundings is called an exothermic chemical reaction. Creating a new product in this way generally causes an increase in temperature in the environment. Other chemical reactions tend to be quiet and dull and aren't nearly as spectacular as exothermic reactions. These reactions absorb more energy from the surroundings than they release back into them. This means that we usually don't observe any release of energy during these types of reactions. These reactions are called endothermic reactions. For us to understand the changes in energy that take place in both endothermic and exothermic reactions, we need to remember the most important law of physics and chemistry whenever we are dealing with energy, the law of conservation of energy. Do you remember this law? The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be destroyed or created. This law also holds true in all chemical reactions. The measurable amount of energy we have at the start of any chemical reaction must be the same as the energy we have at the end. Remember that energy exists in many different forms and it can change from one form to another. Because there are so many different forms of energy, scientists decided to simplify things a little. Energy is found in one of two states. It is either stored within a body or it is used to move the body. Energy stored inside a body is called the body's potential energy. Potential energy is influenced by the position of a body in relation to other bodies. The energy of motion of a body, which can be a molecule, an atom, a particle or an object, is called its kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is influenced, in other words, increased or decreased, by the forces acting on that body. For example, if you hold a rock in the air, it has gravitational potential energy because of its position relative to the Earth. If you lift it higher, its gravitational potential energy will increase. So, potential energy and kinetic energy are the two main groups into which we can classify all forms or types of energy. Now, inside atoms, molecules and ions, Potential energy is stored in the chemical bonds that keep these particles together. We call this type of potential energy chemical potential energy. This chemical potential energy can be transferred to the particles of the surroundings during a chemical reaction, increasing the kinetic energy of these particles. Remember 
there's a direct link between the average kinetic energy of particles and temperature. When the average kinetic energy of particles increases, energy is given out and the temperature of the surroundings increases. This is exactly what happens in an exothermic reaction. In an endothermic reaction, energy is absorbed from the surroundings and stored in the bonds of the products that form. This means that the energy of the surroundings is less at the end of the reaction than at the beginning. You should, however, notice that the total amount of energy remains constant during both these types of reactions. Thank you, Nelly. It is very clear from this that when bonds are broken, energy is required. And when new bonds form, energy is released. Energy that is needed to break a bond is called the bond energy or bond dissociation energy. Bond energies are measured in units of kilojoules per mole. Bond energy is a measure of the bond strength. If the bond energy is large, the bond is strong, and lots of energy is required to break the molecule into individual atoms. Chemists determine bond energies experimentally and then store the values in databases so that they can be used in calculations. The exact bond energy or bond enthalpy of a particular chemical bond depends upon the molecular environment in which the bond exists. You do not have to remember bond energy values. They will be given to you or they can be found in chemical data books. There is a table of some bond energies in the series guide. We can use bond energies to calculate and predict if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic. The difference in bond energy between the reactants and the products is known as the heat of reaction. For a reaction at constant pressure, it is also the enthalpy change of the system. This is represented using the symbol delta H. To calculate the enthalpy change, we use the formula delta H is equal to the sum of the energy of the bonds in the reactants minus the sum of the energy of the new bonds that form. This means that we add up all the energies of the broken bonds and add up all the energies of the bonds that are formed and subtract one from the other. Let's do an example. Remember that bond energy is always given for a specific bond. Is the reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen to form ammonia exothermic or endothermic? The balanced equation is given to us as three moles of H2 plus one mole of N2 reacts to form two moles of ammonia with the formula NH3. All of these substances are in the gaseous phase. The first thing we need to do is to show all the bonds in all the molecules. There are three hydrogen-hydrogen single bonds, one nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, and two ammonia molecules, which together have six nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. From the table in the series guide, we find the different bond energies. The energy to break one hydrogen-hydrogen bond is 436 kilojoules per mole. A nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond requires 941 kilojoules per mole. And the formation of a nitrogen-hydrogen bond releases 391 kilojoules per mole. Our next step is to add all the energy of the bonds in the reactants. The sum of the energy required to break all the bonds is three times the bond between the hydrogen atoms and one time the triple bond between the nitrogen atoms. We substitute the values and that gives us 3 times 436 plus 941. 2,249 kilojoules of energy are absorbed to break all the bonds in the reactants. We can use molecular models to visualize this whole process. In the reactants, we have three molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of nitrogen. The energy needed to break the bonds is absorbed by the molecules. When 2,249 kilojoules of energy are absorbed, all the molecules will have broken up into free atoms. The new bonds immediately start to form. 391 kilojoules of energy is released when one nitrogen atom bonds with one hydrogen atom. This takes place six times to form two ammonia molecules. 
Let's complete the calculation to show how much energy is released in the reaction. There are six nitrogen-hydrogen bonds that form. Each of these bonds releases 391 kilojoules per mole. This adds up to 2,346 kilojoules of energy that is released to the surroundings. More energy is released than absorbed, therefore the surroundings will heat up and we can classify this as an exothermic reaction. We use the formula to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction. We substitute the calculated values of 2,249 kilojoules minus 2,346 kilojoules. This gives us an answer of negative 97 kilojoules. The negative delta H value indicates that the reaction is exothermic. More energy is released when the bonds form than is needed to break the bonds. Let's do one more example. Have a pen and paper ready so that you can do the calculation before you look at my answer. Determine if the decomposition of hydrogen iodide into hydrogen and iodine is exothermic or endothermic. The balanced equation is 2 mole Hi react to form 1 mole of hydrogen and 1 mole of iodine. Here is a table of bond energies. Did you discover that this is an endothermic reaction? You should have found that delta H is positive. Let me go through the calculation. In the reaction, there are two HI bonds on the reactant side and one HH bond and one II bond in the products. The energy to break the bonds of the reactants adds up to 598 kilojoules. And the energy released during the formation of the new bonds is 587 kilojoules. The difference between the energy required for the bond to be broken and the energy released for the new bonds that form is positive 11 kilojoules. From these calculations, we can conclude that energy is absorbed for this reaction to take place. We know that exothermic reactions will always have a negative heat of reaction, and for endothermic reactions, the heat of reaction is positive. Let's look at a few reactions that happen around us on a daily basis and decide if they are exothermic or endothermic reactions. The first example is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is often considered to be the single most important life process on Earth. Light energy is changed into chemical energy and oxygen is released. Without photosynthesis, there would be no oxygen in the atmosphere. Photosynthesis involves many chemical reactions, but they can be summed up in a single chemical equation. 6CO2 plus 6H2O in the presence of light energy reacts to form C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Light energy from the sun is used by green leaves to produce its own food. Carbon dioxide and water from the environment is absorbed and the light energy combines the reactants to produce glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis can therefore be classified as an endothermic reaction. Energy in the form of sunlight is absorbed when the reaction takes place. Another life process is respiration. Respiration is the chemical reaction that happens in our bodies to produce energy for our cells. In this reaction, glucose with the formula C6H12O6 reacts with oxygen from the air that we breathe in to form carbon dioxide and water, which we breathe out. Energy is released in the reaction. The energy that is produced allows the cells to carry out their functions efficiently. Can you see now why you need to eat food to get energy? It is not the food itself that provides you with energy, but the exothermic reaction that takes place when compounds within the food react with the oxygen you have breathed in. The last reaction is combustion of fuels. Fuels are substances that react with oxygen to release useful energy. Most of the energy is released as heat, but light energy is also released. In this photo, we see a jet that burns jet fuel. In general, for complete combustion, hydrocarbon or fuel burns in enough oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water, and energy is released. Combustion is therefore another example of an exothermic reaction. 
This brings us to the end of this lesson. Next time, we will learn how to draw energy diagrams for chemical reactions. Practice more of the bond energy calculations. Remember to watch the rest of the videos in this series and to check out the Mindset Learn website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.